In the last video, we looked at a model of a car that was just driving at a steady speed, and we got a, uh, uh, an equation for its motion. And here, I've got a new car here. I've got the rocket car. Now, the rocket car is kind of a strange little car. It starts off very slowly, but it gradually increases speed. And the uh, model for it is the distance in terms of miles equals t in hours squared. So for instance, if, if you're talking about a time zero, of course it's zero. The, the, I'm sorry, I want to put t and d here. Let me change that to t and d. At time zero, we've gone zero miles because if you put zero in there, you zero squared is zero. And after one hour, we've only, we're only, we've only gone one mile. And after five hours, let's say, we've gone 25 miles. So it's very slow in the beginning. But when we get up to 10 hours, we're going 100 miles an hour because we, not a miles an hour, we've traveled 100 miles, excuse me. So this gives, a, you put your time in there and you get your distance. After five hours, the thing's only gone 25 miles, and after 10 hours, it's gone 100 miles. So it's, it's, it seems to be increasing in speed, and that's an important aspect of this. And what we're really interested in, as we showed in the last video, that when we found the slope, we knew the rate of, the rate of change, that is, distance over time or miles per hour. And that's kind of what we're interested in is finding the slope, but I noticed something about a curve is that there's no one slope. So I'm going to take a look, actually I think I'll take a look at one here after one hour. And this would be, that would be if I took one hour rather than t in general. I'm going to put one hour in there and I'm going to get, and I've gone one mile, that's it. After one hour I've gone one mile. But I'm interested in how fast I'm going at this time. And in order to find out how fast I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to have to find the slope of the curve right at this point. Now, what's the intuitive idea of a slope of a curve? That's kind of the thing's always changing. That's for one thing. Well, imagine a little bug, cockroach, crawling on the curve. And he crawls up to this point, And he stands there. And on his back is a 2 by 4. OK, so he stops right above 1. The slope of his 2 by 4 is essentially the slope of the curve at that point, 1 and 1. And that's how we intuitively think of it. In other words, the bug shares a point and the slope of the curve at that one point. So if we can find the slope of the 2 by 4, then we found the rate of change, or how fast this rocket car is going after one hour. In fact, that's instantan the instantaneous rate of change. The way we do this is we pick another point up the road, h units. Now this is 1. I'm going up here 1 plus h units. And so I've got another point. Okay? And of course this point is 1 and 1, and this point is 1 plus h, comma, you know, I'll put it for a square bracket there, 1 plus h, comma, 1 plus h squared. That's how we get the, the d value, okay? And that's over here, 1 plus h quantity squared. Of course, this is just 1 here. So I now have two points. Let me make this look better here. If I have two points, I can draw a line between them. And this is called the secant line. And there it is. Now, I look at my secant line, this one here, which now I wish I'd done in yellow chalk. I just happen to have some yellow chalk. You know, like yellow chalk. It. There's my secant line, right, going through there. And that is, that's the one that goes through these two points. The, I can find the slope of the secant line because I've got the two points. Here they are, at least in the abstract. And I can find the slope of the, the secant line. I'm more interested in the slope of the cockroaches 2 by 4, though, or the tangent line. Put tangent line. I'm more interested in the slope of that. But I see that my yellow line is pretty close. So I figure if I find the slope of the yellow line, what the heck? That's close enough, right? That's as, almost as good. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to find the slope of the secant line, m sub se seek. Okay? And obviously, it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so to speak. Of course, it's in d's and t's. So I'm going to go 1 plus h quantity squared minus 1 over 1 plus h minus 1. I hope we're getting all this stuff moving back and forth here, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm taking, I can find this. I've got the two points. There's the slope. I can simplify this a little bit and say it's 1 plus h 
quantity squared minus 1. This is 1 minus 1 over h. Okay, so you give me an h and, uh, and I can find this, and, and you know how far up you want to bring this point, and I can give you the slope, and that's approximately the slope of the uh, curve at this point, approximately, but it's not exactly. And one way we, I might be able to improve on that maybe is to bring h in a little bit. So I'm going to get closer. In other words, I'm going to take a point right here. I can get it right here. Okay. And now this is 1 plus h. All right. And if I draw the secant line there, I'm also do that in yellow. And it's a little hard to see, but you can see what happens. This yellow line is even closer, a better approximation. Well, that's wonderful. I've got a better approximation. And I might say, well, if I bring it in closer, I'll get a better approximation. If I bring it into a, within a thousand, I'll get a better approximation. And if, what's the small? What happens if I take h to zero? Well, I look over here and I say I'd love to take h to zero. Here it is, but it's in the denominator. Can't do it. But maybe we can do something with this. Let's see what we can do. Let's take this and expand this one plus two h plus h squared. If I square this binomial, minus one over h. And now I, well, 1 and 1 cancels, and this equals 2, I need some room here, 2h plus h squared over h. Now be careful, you can't just cancel out within a sum. I'm going to factor an h out, and I'm going to get 2 plus h over h. Now I can cancel these h's, and I end up with 2 plus h. Now, if I know that I'm getting a better and better approximation as h gets smaller and smaller, you give me any h and I can give you the uh, slope of that secant line. I'll make it as small as I like. This is 2 plus h here. Let's make sure you see this. I'm not really supposed to bring it to 0 because in the original slope here, this original function here, I can't, I can't put 0 in the denominator. But what am I getting closer to as h gets smaller and smaller? I'm getting closer to 2 which is the actual slope of the curve. So we, this says that m of the tangent line, up over here, tan, m sub tan, is probably 2. That means after I've been driving for an hour, I've gone one mile, and I'm going two miles an hour. 